and welcome to Frank's School. Uh, I, uh, I'm still wandering around a little bit, uh, and, and I'm changing the name of what I'm doing. I'm going to call this Guided Viewing of the Past of Britain, not the History of Britain, uh, because it occurred to me that history is just one version of the past. That may be hard to sink in, that history, that's what, history basically by definition is what is after writing, what's been written down. That is one version. Uh, but there is so much of the past about which nothing was written, and yet it occurred. Um, archaeologists know this, obviously. That's what they study, they, mostly, uh, what, what can't be found through history. And, and on this farm, uh, this very farm where I, where I live, the earthworks all over the place speak of a past that uh, is not writ that there's no history of it really it's, it can't be found so anyway we can lose sight of that that history is just one version how do you reach the other versions well you look at what people did the the craftsmen you know I, I, I'm now looking and I'm going to continue to do this I think I, I'm looking at this material through the lens of a decentralist and also as a craftsman, or at least a craftsman supporter as a craftsman. Uh, and uh, they, craftsmen with their hands and their bodies, workers, they have left a record. Uh, uh, related to that, uh, I have said before, oh, and by the way, the history, victors in wars get to write the history. I was talking about that with the German, with Thomas, and he said, yeah, I know. Uh, I would love to get a history, and I think eventually I'll, I'll reach that point where, where I have come to a history of World War II, say, or, or those two wars together, from a, a, a different perspective uh, from simply uh, the victors. I, I'm struggling with that, really, actually. Now, I have, uh, I have uh, made this somewhat outrageous statement before that, that literacy is overrated. I'll stand by that. You know, I, I, you don't have to be literate to be smart. Uh, you know, it's just, maybe it's obvious, but I think it's, it, I don't think it is obvious to a lot of people. I didn't realize that until I lived in Brazil, really. Uh, well, maybe before I suspected it. Reading can be a bad habit. Uh, many people read way too much. <laughs> I, I really think reading can be a seriously bad habit. And when I created, uh, in the 1970s, late 70s or early 80s, I created a fictional character called Marion, the best of all craftsmen, based on Elmerinen uh, from the Finnish uh, epic. Uh, Marion has no words, has no use of words. Uh, the way I created the character, he understands words, but he cannot, will not, cannot speak a word. Words are not available to him. He is a craftsman. More of that later on. But anyway, in the way I'm talking, in a sense what I've done is I've jumped the fence. <laughs> it, it, recently there was film footage of these two llamas running around and people trying to herd the llamas in a, in a city. Well, that's a common occurrence on farms that animals get out and you run around. They jump the fence, they get out. And, and uh, in a sense, that's what I've done by looking at this material as a decentralist. I'm not looking at it like I'm not in the confines of what people usually think. In a sense, I'm an outlaw. Uh, the, the German word, Vogelfrei, uh, Thomas and, and Shirley and I talked about, well, how do you say that in German? I like that word because Vogel means bird and, and Frei means free, so bird free. Uh, out of the bounds. Uh, and uh, you know, the expression loose cannon comes to mind. There was a period of time when I was teaching in public school that I just couldn't take it anymore. I had to speak out, and I started to write letters to the editor. At considerable peril, I suppose, to my job, but nobody, because it, I was taking on the centralization of the education system, the, the standards, what do they call it, common core, I, I just hated that stuff, because Pennsylvania had been decentralized, very much so, uh, when I began to teach. In, but anyway, I was like a loose cannon. Uh, my administrators, they couldn't actually tell me, stop. It was free speech. 
but they didn't really know what to do. And I think they were almost a little worried about what was I going to say next. Well, in a sense, I, I get that feeling again. All right, now back to the sort of the matter at hand. Timelines. I, I could not find this book for a while. And then I found it, Timelines of World History. I, I'm not saying it's the very best, but it's really interesting. And uh, I'll probably be consulting it now and then. Uh, but uh, while, since I couldn't find that, I was looking at, well, how can I get sort of strict timelines online? And there is something called List of Years. If you will uh, Google that, uh, you get a list of what was going on every year that we know about. Uh, and it's separated into days or centuries. Uh, and I will consult that as well. It's not perfect by any means. Uh, the, the, the basic obliteration of the German city of Hagen on uh, October 1st, 1943, I think it was, in that night, it, it wasn't mentioned. Uh, you know, I looked that up as an example. Uh, but what was going on down in Italy was there was so much going on at that time. Uh, but anyway, uh, oh, and there's also the list of English kings. List of English kings. If you go to that, that might help to sort this out a little bit. Uh, the House of Wessex. Uh, I'm not going to go in great detail with this. I'm not going to promise to cover every one of these. But once I latch on to the documentary, starting with the House of Normandy with the William the First uh, Norman invasion, then probably I'll mention every single king as we go. But anyway, such kings as Offa, Edward the Confessor, and Harold Godwinson. He's the, he was the one who was killed in the Battle of Hastings by uh, William Duke of Normandy. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm sort of mentioning these because I'm leaping across them in a way. And in this series, in these weeks ahead here, I'm going to be thinking periodically, so what was going on in Germany at this time? Because both Germany, because of my friends and much more, uh, I love the German language, and Portugal, for again, for various reasons, I'm going to be looking at what was going on in these places at this time. So I'm using... Uh, uh, the past of Britain, just as I said, like a backbone to keep me going. Well, Andalusia, you know, during this time, before the Battle of Hastings, Islam had spread across North Africa into southern Spain. Andalusia, or Andalusia, uh, southern Spain, it, it got to Portugal. It was very influential in Portugal as well. And Charlemagne in France centralized, centralized France uh, for a while, or parts of France. Uh, this, uh, I, I regard Islam as a centralizing factor too around Mecca and Medina. A and a book. Uh, all right, uh, oh boy, I suppose I feel like, I seem like I'm, I'm wandering a little bit, but uh, eventually I'll probably settle down. But, you know, you're, you're hearing the words of a Vogelfrei. Bye for now.